Hey everyone, Rua here bringing you the next in my series of job guides. So far I've covered what I consider my best tank, my best support job, and my best pet job. But now it's time for me to go into what I consider my best DPS job, the Dark Knight. This guide will be mercifully shorter than my previous effort, but it will still cover the basics of the job and then some more. So brace yourself for a rather large information drop, especially if DPS classes are something new to you. The Dark Knight is a staple of the Final Fantasy series and its iteration in this game has undergone several ups and downs over the years, now finally settling in a stable place as a powerful DPS. There's a bit more to the Dark Knight than the average DPS, so I think that this job merits a guide. Historically, the Dark Knight has served as the analogue of the Paladin, and in this game it's no different. The Dark Knight is a heavy DPS job that focuses on dealing as much damage as possible, while also serving as a competent off-tank in the event of an emergency. The Dark Knight is proficient in the use of two-handed weapons, mostly scythes and greatswords, but it's not necessarily restricted to these two weapon types. Unlike its other heavy DPS brethren, the Dark Knight is also an adept spellcaster, focusing primarily on dark magic, but also having access to enfeebling magic, as well as low-tier and elemental magic. When it comes to strengths, the Dark Knight has a lot going for it. First and foremost, it's a very strong melee DPS, capable of punching out great damage even with low support. When high levels of support, player competency, and optimal circumstances are thrown into the equation, the Dark Knight goes from being a great DPS to an outstanding DPS. Dark Knights are capable of self-capping their own job ability haste with the use of one ability, and their dark magic serves a dual purpose of buffing themselves while weakening their opponents. Also. Since it has such a wide array of weapons available to it, and a vast selection of weapon skills to pull from, the Dark Knight is very flexible when forming skill chains. The aforementioned optimal circumstances can also grant the Dark Knight an unreal degree of durability, and I'll be sure to go into how you achieve this later on in this guide. Under these circumstances, the Dark Knight can also keep itself alive for a very long time, especially if they are using the Apocalypse Scythe. Finally, and as per its lore, the Dark Knight is death incarnate to Arcana, monsters that have been given unnatural life by means of magic. Still, there's a fair bit that you need to be aware of. Reaching the top level of Dark Knight DPS requires some measure of optimal circumstance, and this can pose a problem. Your situation will not always be optimal, and you will struggle against monsters that either heavily resist drain spells, or even worse, outright resist them, like Undead do. Also. Casting spells mid-fight will inevitably slow down your DPS, so you need to assess whether or not a spell is actually worth casting. It's not just spells that you need to contend with either. Dark Knights have a lot of, let's call them levers, it needs to pull in order to function properly, so it's a very macro and reflex intensive job. On that note, although it has a stun spell, properly stunning targets requires good reflexes, which not everyone is blessed with. The reliance on optimal circumstances will repeatedly come back to bite players, especially when you consider that Dark Knight abilities and high amounts of damage they deal generate a lot of eti, so a Dark Knight that goes full throttle with no breaks will crash and burn easily. Although they hit hard and fulfill that part of their role admirably, a Dark Knight can't directly support its party members in the same manner that, say, a warrior can. It's a small issue, but it's an issue nonetheless. Finally, since it uses so many different weapon types, Dark Knights need a lot of equipment to fully function. Merits on Dark Knight are extremely straightforward. For Group 1, you're going to invest all your merits into the effect of Last Resort and into reducing the reuse time of Last Resort. With Group 2, you're going to invest points into the effect of Desperate Blows, a job trait which is attached to Last Resort itself. When I said that a Dark Knight can self-cap its own JA haste with one ability, this is what I meant. Last Resort is a crucial ability for maximizing your DPS, so pushing it further makes sense. The second category you're going to max out is Dark Seal. While the appeal of Diabolic Eye for its accuracy bonus and Muted Soul for its enmity reduction are understandable, please trust me when I suggest that you should be capping out Dark Seal. There's a very good reason I'm suggesting this to you, and I will get round to explaining why I am later on in this guide. The first ability you'll get on Dark Knight is your SP, Blood Weapon. Blood Weapon causes your melee attacks to drain HP from your target, 
as long as that target is not undead. Blood Weapon is also subject to MDT and Phalanx effects, so if your target has these active, the HP drained will be less. By itself, Blood Weapon isn't anything special, but when it's stacked with other abilities I'll go into later on, it can become quite strong. I've already gone into Last Resort, but there's something else you need to be aware of when using it. Like the name implies, Last Resort skyrockets your attack power but cripples your defense in the process, so it's the definition of a high risk, high reward ability. If used outside of optimal circumstances, Last Resort is kind of dangerous to use, so you need to keep your wits about you when it's active, as any moderately strong counter TP attack from a monster is likely going to kill you. Weapon Bash is an ability version of the Stun Spell, with its only major difference being just that. It's an instantaneous ability, whereas the Stun Spell has a casting time. Weapon Bash is also rather accurate, even when you're not using magic accuracy in the set. So if you see an opening to stop a spell, stop an attack, or if you just need a window to cast a spell on yourself, feel free to use it. Soul Eater is the series signature ability of the Dark Knight, and there's a fair bit that you need to know about it. Soul Eater causes all of your attacks and weapon skills to consume 10% of your current HP as for additional damage per hit. Soul Eater is affected by the Stalwart Soul trait, which cuts this HP consumption in half, while still retaining the 10% damage increase. Soul Eater also gives a small accuracy bonus while it's active. Small, but it still helps. Soul Eater is an even greater high risk, high reward ability than Last Resort what with a crippled defense coupled with constant HP loss, and that's not even taking into account attacks still coming your way. Still, within optimal circumstances, or when you have an alert healer, it becomes a bit safer to use Soul Eater. In addition to Last Resort, Soul Eater also stacks with and complements Blood Weapon very well. Consume Mana does what it says on the can. It converts all of your current MP into base damage, which is applied to your weapon for the next attack or weapon skill, in a ratio of 10 MP to 1 base damage. This is an ability that you ideally need to be using a scythe to get the most out of, as using entropy following consume mana will restore all of the MP you just lost. Great swords cannot do this, so it's harder to use consume mana when you're swinging a great sword, as casting aspir will inevitably lower your DPS. I've mentioned optimal circumstances a few times so far, but now it's time for me to show you what this actually means. Optimal circumstances basically describe any situation where you can use Drain 3 to give yourself a massive HP boost effect, therefore rendering the dangers of Last Resort and Soul Eater to moot points. Achieving this HP boost is actually very simple, but it does require some know-how and some equipment to maximize. you want to use both Dark Seal and Nether Void for attempting a gravitational darkness skill chain and then bursting drain 3. Dark Seal will give you a duration of just over 5 minutes on the effect, which is long enough to reapply the effect when it wears off. Nether Void on the other hand greatly increases the amount absorbed from your target, which is how a Dark Knight can get such absurd numbers on their HP boost. I'm again vouching for using a scythe to pull this off, especially if solo, as great swords cannot solo darkness or gravitation. Establishing Maintaining and making the most of this HP boost is crucial to maximizing your damage, but more importantly, surviving on Dark Knight. There's quite a few things you can do with this much HP, and I'll be sure to go into them later on in this guide. Arcane Circle and Arcane Crest are the abilities Dark Knights use for amplifying their innate Arcana Killer trait, as well as extending these effects to their party. Arcane Circle directly reduces the damage taken from Arcana, directly increases the damage dealt to Arcana, and grants an intimidation effect. Arcane Crest on the other hand absolutely hammers the accuracy, evasion, magic accuracy, magic evasion, and TP gain rate for any arcana hit with it. These effects, especially when stacked, are extremely powerful and you absolutely will notice them when they are active. Scarlet Delirium is a very powerful ability, but it's hard to get the most out of. Scarlet Delirium causes a Dark Knight to convert part of the damage they take with the next attack they receive into a straight up attack power increase. 
the increase is a percentage increase, and its effects are applied after all of the forms of damage calculation take place. Scarlet Delirium's formula is damage taken proportional to maximum HP divided by 2. So, if you take an attack that knocks off 90% of your HP, you'll get a bonus of 45%. Scarlet Delirium is best used when you see a powerful AoE attack with a long wind-up readying. The final ability you'll get as a Dark Knight is your second SP, Soul Enslavement. Soul Enslavement drains the TP of your target with each melee attack you land. The effect of Soul Enslavement is actually extremely powerful, and you can practically shut down a target from doing TP attacks while it's active, unless that target has an absurd amount of regain or is guaranteed to use TP attacks at certain percentages. Also, you need to be constantly expending your own TP to ensure that the drain effect is maintained because if you just sit at 3000 TP with Soul Enslavement active, you're not going to drain anything. Soul Enslavement also makes multi-step skill chaining very easy, and you can indeed do some very impressive things with it. Its duration is very short though, only 30 seconds long, so make sure that you make the most of it. We've now come to the tips, tricks and tactics section of this guide, and there's still a fair bit that I need to go over. This will be slightly different from my previous guides, in that I'm going to go over a few spells that the Dark Knight gets in this section, so don't worry if you saw me omitting them so far, I am getting to them. Also, since this is a DPS job, I'm going to go over equipment sets in this section as well. Aside from Drain 3, the most valuable spell you'll ever have on Dark Knight is probably Dread Spikes. If you've ever come across this spell when fighting a Dark Knight NM, you absolutely know why you should fear it when you're facing it, but revel in it when you're the one casting it. Dread Spikes uses your max HP at time of casting as a baseline, before calculating job-specific enhancements like job gifts and equipment. It then applies the Drain Spikes effect to the Dark Knight. Given how easily a Dark Knight can get near-capped HP under optimal circumstances, this effect can be extremely strong, and gives you very good security when you're going full throttle. Last Resort's effect will actually help Dread Spikes by making targets hit you harder, therefore draining more HP from them in the process. This is why Dread Spikes is so lethal when NMs use it. They have a lot of HP so their baseline is high, and players typically geo frailty all the things, so the amount Dread Spikes takes on DPS jobs is absurdly high. Add in the attack speed of, say, Blue Mages or Thieves, and you can see why this kills so many people so quickly. One word of warning though, Dread Spikes will not absorb damage from TP attacks or blue magic. It only works on melee attacks, so keep your wits about you. Another useful spell you'll often use is Absorb Attribute, or Absorb Attribute for short. The only thing better than dispelling buffs from your target is stealing buffs from your target, and this is exactly what Absorb Attribute does. Use it if you see a target use a buff you'd like to take. If used with Nether Void, Absorb Battery will take 3 buffs from your target instead of 1. I'm not going to bother doing a Scythe vs Greatsword battle to see which is the better DPS, as a good player should have both options available in any given situation. I'll instead go into what players can do with both options. Scythes have far more utility built into their weapon skills, and easily have more flexibility when forming skill chains, darkness skill chains especially. Guillotine, for example, inflicts a fairly accurate silence on your target, as long as you properly gear for it. Infernal Scythe inflicts a strong attack down effect, which stacks with the bio 2 spell Dark Knights also get, so you can effectively cancel out the defense loss in last resort by using both. Scythes are also excellent for making use of the impact spell, which takes a massive amount of MP to cast. Simply using Entropy after you land it will fully restore your MP. Casting Aspir spells will your DPS if you opt to recover MP that way, while Entropy will do it all in one go, while also doing damage. The Scythe's hardest hitting weapon skill is Cross Reaper, which scales attack power the higher your TP gets over 1000%. When your TP breaks 2000%, Cross Reaper gets stupidly powerful, and if you close a Darkness skill chain with it, 
which is easy given its distortion property, expect to see a massive chunk of monster HP fly off. Scythes are also very well suited for taking advantage of Soul Eater, or rather the Apocalypse Scythe is. Soul Eater's damage output is reliant on the Dark Knight keeping their HP high to convert more HP to raw damage. This is why it combos nicely with Blood Weapon. The Apocalypse however has a weapon skill attached to it which more or less fully heals the Dark Knight when it connects. Catastrophe. Catastrophe's nice, but it's hardly your hardest hitting weapon skill. So unless you're either tanking or don't have Soul Eater active, consider using the Anguta, Liberator or the Cronus. The Apocalypse can function as a DPS weapon obviously, as it has very high accuracy, base damage and has the ability to occasionally deal double damage on the first hit of an attack round. However, it really shines in situations where there's going to be a lot of damage flying around, or in situations where you have to tank in a pinch. I'm fond of using it for solo or low man content, but when high amounts of buffs and competent healers start getting added to the equation, i found that you really are better off using another weapon. Still, I recommend getting the Apocalypse and keeping it to hand, as you never know when you may need it. Check my recent OU video for evidence of this, and for a good example of defensive Dark Knight play. Strangely enough, one of your best zerging weapons with a scythe is actually a non-REMA option. It's the Dark Nemania. When your HP is high and both Soul Eater and Blood Weapon are active, use it and just watch what happens. Dynamania's colossal boost of Soul Eater will rip things to pieces. Just be extremely careful when Blood Weapon falls. This is probably why the developers will never let Relic Weapon skills be unlockable to all weapons. Can you imagine how broken this would be with Catastrophe? Here I've provided some of the weapon skill sets I use when using a scythe. I've also provided my base TP set, as well as a set I use for Drain and Aspir. I think I omitted my Infernal Scythe and Guillotine sets, so I'll be sure to link those below. You can pause the video now or come back to this section later for reference if you want. I'll leave a timestamp to make it easier for you. Greatswords tend to be better for all out raw damage output. Skill chain wise, they're the analogue of scythes and that they're better at light skill chains but aren't very good at creating darkness. This poses a problem when you're looking to maximise Strain 3 and Dread Spikes, but you can still get some decent effects from both if you know what you're doing. Free casting Drain 3 with abilities active and a soldier's drink, if you're in Ashka areas, will still net you a good enough return for most things. Great Swords have arguably the best weapon skill a Dark Knight can use when fully buffed Resolution. And they also fill some niche utilities, with Herculean slash inflicting paralysis and Shockwave being a sleep guard version of a weapon skill. Resolution in particular is very useful in situations where you actually want to avoid skill chaining your target in the event that its mechanics could punish you for doing so. Jin and Kin and Omen both have mechanics along this line, as does Maju and Reis and Jima. So spamming Resolution, which went skill chain with itself or with Savage Blade, is arguably your best option in such a situation. I really have to emphasise how powerful Resolution gets when you fully power it up. Believe me, you will see some very high numbers with it. Above all, Greatswords are fantastic for overwhelming targets before they even have a chance to respond. You're giving up some of your self-sustained utility for pure damage, but admittedly in many cases this is what you'd be expected to do, especially when in group content. You can still use a scythe if you wish, but remember that you need both options available. These two weapon classes shine in different areas, so keep your options open. I do highly advise getting the Ragnarok though, as great swords lack any sort of fusion linker without Scourge. And since fusion is crucial for generating more tidal light step skill chains, when you don't have it, you really will miss it. I've heard good things about the Cladderbog, but since I don't actually own one, I can't comment. Chime in below in the comment section if you have one, and if you can.
I only have one or two more things to advise on. As moot as it seems, and although you'll almost never cast them, try keeping an elemental magic set around for select fights which require procs. I've been meaning to upload a Dark Knight vs Golden Kiss video for a while, but just haven't gotten around to it. Being able to reliably land elemental magic makes Kiss trivial for a Dark Knight. Dark Knights also get some enfeebling magic spells, but the spells that they get are largely based on immobilizing a monster than really enfeebling it mid-battle. Bind, Sleep and Break all meet this purpose, and you can rotate the three of them to keep a monster in place. Additionally, and more importantly, you have your Absorb line of spells to upkeep. You can drain every attribute out of your target, from Strength, to Vitality, to Mind, and you can also drain Accuracy as well for good measure. The good thing is that Absorb spells last quite a while, and they also carry into new battlefields that you begin. So you can actually fully buff yourself through Absorb spells, and then pop a new NM. You can use Nether Void to increase the amount absorbed from the target, but again, since Nether Void is typically reserved for Drain 3, you'll seldom use it for this purpose. Endark 2 is the last spell worth mentioning here. Endark 2 does what it says in the can, it adds darkness damage to your attacks. However, it does two other things as well that you should know. Firstly, Endark 2 grants a small attack bonus which decays with each successful hit you land. And secondly, the Endark effect overwrites the additional effects on weapons. Dark Knights are also very good at burning, or rather cleaving crowds of fodder. Remembering how Drain 3 and Tread Spikes work, you can make yourself very hard to kill while gathering up hordes of monsters to cut down. You can use a handful of high level great axes, and since you're using a two handed weapon, you're still going to get the full effect of both Last Resort and the Smite job trait when using it. This can also be used in Omen when your floor objectives are completed, to quickly speed up the floor and progress. Do watch out for Unseelies when doing this though, as they have access to a full dispel attack which will make things very frustrating for you. Also, keep an eye out for Ladybugs during the daylight hours, as they then possess an amnesia attack which will also make things very annoying. This brings me to the end of this guide. The Dark Knight is a very powerful job, but it needs a lot of micromanagement and know-how in order to get it there. When it does get there though, it really pays dividends. I hope that this guide was helpful for players considering taking the job up, and that it also emboldens players to bring it and other heavy DPS jobs to content, rather than just persisting with a cookie cutter setup. If you have any comments, questions, or need me to elaborate on points, then leave me a comment below, send me a message in game, or send me a personal message through the auction house forum. Until next time, take care.